Hello, welcome. Kathy Dixon here, your favorite vestibular physical therapist from Action Potential Physical Therapy. Um, I'm here today to kind of give you a little overview of what to expect if you were to come to Action Potential for a vestibular exam. So this would be, you would be coming in to get looked at for your dizziness, imbalance, or your vertigo. Um, sometimes it can be a little scary. So I just wanted to take a little video and show you a little, um, a little bit about what to expect. So in a PT examination, first First, we're going to bring you into a room just like this. Uh, we're going to sit down and I'm just going to talk to you and have a conversation um, about the symptoms you're experiencing and then how it's affecting the activities that you like to do all throughout the day. Um, in this conversation, I'm also going to get an idea of what I might be looking for and also rule out some red flags for other medical conditions. Then with a vestibular exam, I kind of go backwards. I do the big mobility stuff first, and then I get into the nit and gritties of the vestibular, because in order to figure out what's going on, a lot of times I have to kind of stimulate or bring on that dizziness. Um, so I wanna end with that part. So after we have our conversation about your specific symptoms, I'm gonna do a quick screen of your neck range of motion, maybe some other spinal range of motion, and then check out your muscles to see if there's any areas of increased tension or pain that could be contributing to some of your dizziness and balance. Then I'm gonna do um, a posture balance assessment. So I'm gonna look at some of the bigger mobility things you might do, like walking, getting in and out of a chair, rolling if we have to. And then I'm gonna go into some more specific balance exercises. Um, in the video that's coming up, a lot of times I like to do a, um, a balance test where I have you stand with your feet together, eyes open, eyes closed, and then stand on a, a compliant surface, such as a thick piece of foam and see how your balance does that way. I'm usually gonna see how you balance standing on one leg and maybe in a heel toe position. Then I'm gonna get into the vestibular part, which is the oculo oculomotor examination. So I'm gonna do this with you looking and seeing, and then I have special goggles that block your ability to see, but can record what your eyes are doing, because this will tell me a lot about what's going on in your inner ear. And then at the very end, if I feel it's necessary, I'm gonna do positional testing, we call it the Dix Hall Pike or roll test um, to kind of see if you, the reason for your dizziness or imbalance is um, related to BPPV or the crystals in your inner ear. All right, so the next slide is just a video of that balance assessment that I usually do, and then the ocular motor exam. While it plays, I'm gonna kind of describe for you what's going on. So my lovely model, Nina here, our marketing coordinator. Okay. Bring your feet together. So I'm gonna cross have her bring her feet All together right. on level surface, cross her arms. I'm gonna time her for 30 seconds with her eyes open, 30 seconds with her eyes closed. Then I'll have her step on the foam and bring her feet together. Same thing, 30 seconds with her eyes open, 30 seconds with her eyes closed. I never walk away from her, okay? Because it's very interesting. Sometimes people can become very unbalanced while standing on the foam. Again, I further will go into assessing how someone's walking, moving, and some additional balance tests like standing on one leg or in a heel toe position. Then we move into the ocular motor exam. So a lot of times I'll have um, you, the client, sit on a table or in a chair if you need some support. And we're going to start by screening your eye movement, okay? Do your eyes move together? Do they move cleanly? So I'm going to have you just look, see if there's any residual eye instability. And then we're going to screen your eyes moving up about 30 degrees, down about 30, well, I actually went side to side, and then up. And then down, again, I'm looking, do they move together and cleanly? Then I'm gonna take you to your full range all the way out to the side, all the way out to the other side, and then up. And then we check your eyes moving down. So again, if I see little ticking or jumping of the eyes, that's gonna tell me something might be going on with your inner ear. Then I'm gonna check um, the ability of your eyes to converge or basically see double, and that should happen within two inches from the bridge of your nose. So again, Nino is perfect. Then here I'm testing cicades or cicadic eye movement. So this is the ability of your eyes to go from one point to another point 
and one point to another point. Your eyes should move very cleanly and then they should fixate on that target. A lot of times when somebody has an inner ear disorder, I'm gonna see the eyes move and kind of bounce around and then move and bounce around. So here I'm gonna test her all directions. So I'm saying nose, finger, nose, finger. You see her eyes moving. And then we go up and down, finger, nose, finger, nose, same thing, moving down, okay? Then we're gonna get into some head movement testing. Um, she's going to keep her eyes fixated on a target while we do head rotation, okay? And this tells me a lot about what's going on with the inner ear and the brain. Then we're gonna move into quick flicks. It's not a strong thrust, it's just a quick flick of the head where again, she needs to maintain her eye focus on my nose. Um, if there's a problem with the inner ear, a lot of times when we do that quick flick, um, the eyes move off the target or they recreate a bouncing eye movement or a nystagmus. Okay, so once I collect that information, then I'm gonna have her put on my goggles, Frenzel lenses, infrared video goggles, whatever you wanna call them. I love these goggles. Um, I have to give vestibular first a plug because um, they make wonderful goggles that are affordable. Um, but we're gonna just kind of fit the goggles over her eyes. Um, the goggles are connected to my computer and I can see a video image of the goggles. Sometimes when we have inner ear disorders, we, um, we learn to compensate by, by using our visual system and fixating our eyes. So when we take away our ability to see what's going on, it can tell me a lot about what's going on in the inner ear. So again, we have the goggles on, I'm watching on the computer. Um, as I stabilize her head, just to see what the eyes are doing in a straight position, then I'm going to have her move her eyes again, halfway to the, the right, halfway to the left, up and down. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some pressure testing. Um, so this kind of helps me rule in, you know, if there's any pressure ear issues within the inner ear. So this one's called the triangle test, where I push those little triangles of your ear in, see if I can get a reproducible eye movement. Um, then I'm going to have her bear down a Valsalva, like she's having a bowel movement. See again, do I get a reproducible eye movement? Um, and sometimes I actually have people pinch their nose and try to blow out without air coming out. And again, I'm just trying to create pressure within her body and see if her eyes respond normally or if they have an abnormal or reproducible eye movement which indicates an inner ear disorder. And then the last one, again, not pleasant, is the head shaking test. Um, and again, this will tell me if there's an inner ear disorder, I just have you bring your head down, your eyes are closed within the goggles. We shake back and forth about 20 times. And then as we get to 20, I have you open your eyes, I stop the shaking and I look at my computer screen to see what your eyes are doing. And, and they should be nice and steady. If you had a reproducible tick or nystagmus, it would indicate to me an inner ear problem. Okay, then based off of what we talk about um, in, in that conversation we had about your symptoms, if I'm suspecting BPPV or the crystals in your ears, we have to go into positional testing. Again, the way to identify BPPV is um, traditionally with the eyes, the vision removed and the goggles on. Sometimes I'll do it without the goggles if it's really uncomfortable for you. But when I bring you back into this next position, Nina's gonna go into what I'm looking for is an eye movement, either a twist or a beating. And that's gonna tell me which canal the crystals have kind of dropped into, which then will tell me which treatment I need to perform, okay? So, so Nina's gonna get on the table here about um, when she comes down, I want her shoulders at the edge of the table because as she comes back, her ears are gonna drop below the level of her shoulders, okay? Again, this, is, this test is for your head position in space. I'm watching my screen to see if I get an eye tick here. So again, we're gonna turn her head 45 degrees to the other direction to test the other side come back on three and let the ears drop below the level of the shoulders. And then I'm watching to see what the eyes are doing in this position. Um, we can also go into the roll test here, um, which is just lying flat, turning the head side to side to test the horizontal canals as well. So that's what the goggles are. 
Um, that's what you can expect in a physical therapy examination. Um, and if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me, kdixon at reachers.com, um, or you can reply on the Facebook message page. But I hope this kind of eases and calms your nerves um, when trying to come in for a vestibular exam, because now you know what to expect. 